we need to define what new media is. From the business side, the fourth largest business, at least in the US, is what they call content creation. And content creation involves movies, music, just creating content, be it entertainment content, content information content, news content, whatever content it is, is a very big business. I think we need to separate content creation from the medium that delivers the content. So looking at it from a business, the reason why many of you get into trouble is that you are all so eager to create the most sensational content. And because you want to be the first and you want to be sensational, you don't do the checks. But we need to look at the integrity of the content creation business. It does involve a lot of money to create good content. It involves talent. That's why you have people like O'Reilly in the US making $50 million a year because there's some talent involved. So we need to create, we need to create content in a responsible manner. The method of distributing the content is really not in doubt. Social media, new media is here to stay. Nothing will stop it. It will evolve, it will get more important. And especially in this 2018, you are about to have a tremendous amount of power and influence in what happens in the 20, 2019 election. I think that you should take that very seriously. We know we have made mistakes um, in our choices, but I think we'll make fewer mistakes if we have the correct information. The power of the new media, I believe, has three major areas. Economic impact. Many people are in business today because they have a distribution through, through social media. A lot of fashion business is distributed through social media. There are people who actually sell clothes, and all they have is an Instagram page. And you go to the Instagram page, you see what they're doing, and then you order, from, you order through the social media. So the economic impact is extremely, extremely important, and I think we're just scratching the surface of economic impact. Um, we read that we have 60 million internet users in Nigeria. The truth of that is that it's probably only about 15 to 20 million unique users. Because the way it's calculated is if you have three phones, you have three internet users. So we have 15 million, 20 million on the high side of Nigerians who have access to social media, unique access. I think that's a very low penetration. It's not as high as we like to think it is. I think that the, we should aim for higher penetration of social media because I think the economic impact will be very, very significant. How you do that is, again, you have to harness your distribution channel, the way you distribute information, and you also have to make sure you have information that people want to see. The second is social impact. I heard a lot of pan panelists talk about how they've been hurt by social media. I too have been a victim of social media. However, I think the benefits to most of us outweighs the pain. Many people are known today because of social media that will not be known otherwise. We have a method to distribute our messages. We shape music, we shape culture. So I think that the social impact of, of new media has absolutely has to be expanded. We have to know that you guys are going to set fashion, you're going to set what we talk about, you're going to set the topics, and please do that responsibly because you have, you can't see the money. The, the money, the economic impact is not so clear, but on the social side, you have responsibilities. What our children wear, how our children dress, what our children value, is all in your hands, and please take that very seriously. I think that will have a longer impact in the long run than the, than the economic one. Finally, I mentioned the political impact. We are about to choose a new president. Unfortunately, in Nigeria, the federal government is way too powerful. The federal government, through policies or lack of policies, can influence how well you're doing business or not. The federal government picks winners and losers. The reason why we fight politics in such a dramatic fashion in Nigeria is because when you're out of power, in Nigeria, you become nobody. 
that must stop. The notion that winner takes all must stop. You guys are the best way to re-educate a political class. And it's probably going to be the most important thing you do in the next 12 months. Additionally, you can make some money doing it because politicians spend lots of money in election years. So there's some economic benefit. But let me, let me take a few examples. I personally don't care who's the next president of Nigeria, but I want him to be the best person we have. We must challenge everybody who wants to be president. We must challenge them to make simple pledges, like obeying every court order, no matter how perverse the government thinks it is. We must, I don't understand why a president of Nigeria does not send his ministers to the Senate with their portfolios. So, the, so you know who you are, who you, are, who you, you send names and say they're ministers and you don't assign portfolios. How are you going to screen them properly? How are you going to ask them the questions? When you send a Supreme Court judge to the United States for screening, they take all the opinions he or she has written for the last 20 years. They subject them to proper screening. But we don't do that because we don't know who the minister is going to be, who's going to be attorney general. They just send names to the Senate. The president should be held to a higher standard than that. We must ask these people who want our votes, who want to lead us, especially since they are so powerful, we must subject them through you to a brutal and rigorous examination this time. If you do your job, we will elect the best president in 2019, and Nigeria will start its journey back from the brink. So, in conclusion, your importance in the next few years to the development of Nigeria cannot be understated or overstated, depending on which side you're looking at. Please discharge your responsibilities with the love and care and attention you have for this country. Thank you. I think that one of the problems we have is that we have a deficit in infrastructure in terms of legacy issues. So anytime there's a technology that can jump over those legacy issues that we don't have to build, in the past, we had to build so many things to actually accomplish what new media accomplishes with technology. So the fact that we can jump all those legacy def deficiencies and go straight to the modern world is very useful economically. I think that social new media has the ability to add significantly to our GDP if properly harnessed. We talked about content creation and distribution channels. How, how can this be leveraged in, in, in a very challenging 21st century economy? You see, the, I'll give you an example. In the movie industry, for example, Nigeria has about 30 or 40 screens across the country. A place like South Africa has over 1,000 screens. The thing holding back Nigerian-made movies today is the fact that you don't have enough distribution. So as soon as the new media, distribution of Nigerian movies gets more and more efficient through all this media content, you will find that the Nigerian movie industry will expand. So that's an example where we're not going to start building new movie theaters across Nigeria. We can jump over that and just use the internet and the digital age to distribute our movies. And that will bring um, uh, music, our uh, movies to where it should be. If you look at the music industry, the music industry has done better than the movie industry because distribution of music is easier than distribution of movies on the, on the, on the web. And then finally, when it comes to policy and creating an enabling environment for a thriving new media that will drive economic growth, what would be your advice to policymakers and government, even as we approach an election period? My advice is to elect government that cares about policies. Because the federal government is very powerful. So whatever we say here doesn't matter. What matters is what the federal government wants to do. And so you need to elect people who care, who understand, who are in the digital age as General Babagida said recently, we need that. Without that, we're just going to be basically wasting our time. We need a proper government with proper leadership that's focused on the policies that will bring us to the new age.